Okay, this tutorial covers how to write a neutralization reaction. Um, it's an overview of what a neutralization reaction is. And we're going to do a, a basic stoichiometry question for um, neutralizing an acid with a base or vice versa, a base with an acid. So it's um, if you remember our precipitation reactions, it's basically the same, same concept. Um, the reason is they're both uh, double replacement reactions. So um, here's the uh, here's the general here's the general reaction. It's a uh, you have an acid, which we'll call H A, plus a base, which we'll call B. The cation will be B, the metal cation will be B, and then O H will be the uh, the basic portion. Here's the proton, um, and uh, here's the hydroxide. Okay, and uh, so they basically swap um, partners, and you're, you'll see that the uh, H combines with the OH, and you'll see that the um, the anion of the acid will combine with the cation of the base, and then you'll get the following products. So you'll get um, H2O or HOH, okay, or all right, H2O. Sometimes you might even see it written like that. Um, plus um, uh, BA, and BA is a uh, generic for um, a salt, it's an ionic compound. Um, usually it's soluble also, okay, and then this is uh, water. Okay, so let's try a quick uh, question here. So let's write the complete molecular, complete ionic, and net ionic equations for neutralization of stomach acid which is HCl, hydrochloric acid, and milk of magnesia, which is uh, magnesium hydroxide. <clears throat> okay, so here's the full molecular. It's uh, um, hydrochloric acid is HCl plus magnesium hydroxide. Um, you may need to write out your ions if you're unsure first before crisscrossing. So uh, magnesium hydroxide, Mg is from the second column. So you have a 2 plus, and then hydroxide is 1 minus. So when you crisscross that, it's OH in parentheses and then 2. And then um, you'll have H2O plus the other, the Mg and the Cl. So just like this general reaction, same thing. They're all like this, Mg, Cl, 2. Okay, and then you balance. So... Remember to do that when you're when you're going from names to writing an equation. Always come up with the uh, um, compounds first and crisscross correctly, and then always balance last. Okay, so Cl we have two, so put a two in front of the HCl, and it should be balanced. Actually, it's not two in front of the H2O. Okay, so uh, now the uh, net, or actually the we'll write the full ionic. So. Um, Basically, what you're doing is uh, you're breaking apart all the ions in, in, into writing them full ionically. And so that 2 means uh, if you have two HCLs, you'll get two of those and two of those. So in a way, you're distributing these coefficients when you go from full to full ionic, full molecular to full ionic. So you have 2H plus, plus Cl minus, or two of those, plus <clears throat> Mg2 plus, plus... Um, now that 2, we're going to write a 2OH here just to indicate that we have, uh, we require 2 OHs in the balanced, uh, in the formula for each Mg. Okay, uh, 2 H2Os. So remember to keep your, uh, this is a pure liquid here, so keep, we always keep liquids, solids, and gases, and Actually, there's an additional one, and weak bases, weak acids, and bases. These stay intact when writing net ionic or full ionic. So water here is a pure liquid, so that's why we don't break it up. Okay, plus um, this is known to be soluble, so Mg... Um, plus two Cl minuses. Okay, and you'll see that um, the 
you have some spectators here, so you'll see that the MG did nothing, so that cancels out, and the CL uh, chloride ions didn't do anything. Okay, so from before and after, they were soluble before, and they're soluble after, and they didn't react with anything, so they're spectators. So your net ionic is going to be what it always is when you react a strong acid and a, and a strong base. Um, actually, this isn't quite one of the strong ones, but it's still, it still uh, will do this. So 2H pluses plus 2OH minuses, and you get 2H2Os. Um, and these twos can actually be reduced, so you could actually write it like this. Your net ionic with showing everything one to one, and that's how you write a net ionic equation. You could, of course, uh, read this, and you could actually go straight to the net ionic um, if you just uh, if you just write out H plus and OH minus and H two O. Okay, so uh, on to a basic stoichiometry question. Um, I'm going to solve the hard one, and I, uh, I'll have you guys try A and C. So make sure you guys have those done. Um, but I'm going to do this. So it says, what volume of each of the following bases will react completely with 25 milliliters of 0 0.20 molar HCl? Um, let, me, let me make a, let me be um, really clear this, this time. So do not use uh, M1V1. This is only for dilutions. You'll find that it actually might work on some of these. The only reason it's working is because you have a one-to-one -one ratio of uh, reactants. Um, you'll see it won't work on B. Okay, but anyway, don't be using that. So there's uh, there's a reaction here. So anytime there's a reaction, we need to be doing uh, dimensional analysis. Okay, just that goes for the whole year. Anytime we're doing a reaction, we should be doing it in a dimensional analysis. Okay, so here's here's B. So we say what volume, that's what we want to solve for is what what volume. So how many uh milliliters? This is our, our final answer needs to be in this. Okay, so we'll write a balanced reaction. So B A O H two plus HCl, and we get H2O plus um, BaCl2. Okay, and put a 2 there, and a 2 there to balance. So we're going to go from, um, we need to get from moles of HCl. Um, actually, let me just let me just start working with this problem. So, the, whenever you're working with molarity, this is pretty much useless. That capital M always convert it to moles of substance HCl per liter. Always do this. Okay, when you're working with molarity, this is the key to solving this problem. So, when you see that capital M, think of it like this. Okay, and this problem will be will be easy for you. Um, so, we're gonna go with uh, so point two zero zero moles of HCl per liter times uh, 25.00 times 10 to the negative third liters okay times and we see that they're reacting in a 2 to 1 ratio okay so we're we're trying to get volume of BA OH2. So right now the information they give us is for HCl. So we need a mole to mole step to convert to the other reactant. So there's one mole of BaOH2 for every two moles of HCl. So our mole of HCl cancels. Okay, and now we're going to actually use the molarity here as a conversion factor and we're going to inverse um inverse the uh, molarity here. So we get 1 liter so that we end up, so we get that mole right there to cancel, so and we'll write 0 0.0500 moles of BaOH2, okay, and then this cancels with this, okay, and then uh, I believe I have this problem done already, so we get our answer is in liters, 0 0.0500 liters, or 
generally if it's this small we usually write it in uh, milliliters so showing three sig figs this is 50.0 milliliters of BaOH2 okay um, that's the end of uh, our first tutorial so again uh, make sure you're doing A and B and make sure you're doing it in this setup so with using a dimensional analysis and the key point here is this there's two key points is always write your cap molarity as moles per liter and the other key step is to note here is uh, that you can use molarity you could um, you could flip it over and use it as a conversion factor if you're solving for um, if you're solving for liters okay this is exactly what we did on that last step 